Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd like to uh, call the Legacy uh, Finance Committee uh, meeting to order. Um, um, I was wondering, uh, Mike, would you be willing to call the, the, the roll, please? Chair Lilly. Lilly present. Vice Chair Jordan. Jordan present. Uh, Representative Steve Green. Present. Representative Acom. Present. Representative Anderson. Anderson present. Representative Bo. Representative Christensen. Present. Representative Hassan. Representative Murphy. Murphy present. Representative Nelson. Nelson present. Representative Erdahl. Representative Waslowick. Waslowick present. Representative Zhang. Here. Uh, Mr. Chair, we have a quorum. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Molzon. Um, we have a quorum, so we're open for business. Uh, so um, the legacy uh, uh, finance uh, bill, um, after a month uh, long of uh, negotiations back and forth, uh, we reached an agreement with uh, the Senate and uh, I think we've got a very solid bill uh, representing uh, uh, both of our positions, the Senate and, and uh, certainly the House positions. And uh, I hope it's something that we all can uh, um, uh, support. And uh, I'm hoping, so this morning we're gonna have staff kind of go through the bill and I'm not sure who's first on on uh, the deck. It looks like uh, Mr. Hagemeyer's, uh kind of smiling there so he must be the the chosen one and, uh, and mr chair yep if you if you'd like i can start with the tracking sheet and i'll share my screen if that's all right and yes. walk through that thank you sir yep and then we'll switch over to um miss roberts to go through the arts fund and then i believe miss taylor and miss mullen will go through some of the language differences um, I'll just talk about the differences from how they met the house, left the house or where there were differences between the house and Senate. The outdoor heritage fund was primarily the same throughout um, on the second page or where the differences were. You'll see, and I guess first for the spreadsheet, the first set of columns is either the governor's recommendation or the council, in this case, the outdoor heritage council. The second set of columns is the house position. The third set of columns was the Senate position. And then the last set of columns is the chair's agreement that you made on 528. Uh, and then here's the change from the house, change, oops, sorry, change from, double check that. So it'd be changed from the council recommendations or the governor's recommendations, the change from the house and then the change from the Senate position uh, for the differences. The first one you'll see is on line 52, the Conservation Partners Legacy Grant Program. Uh, both the House and Senate had picked up an additional $590,000 to fully fund that. I believe it was a supplemental council recommendation that was included in the agreement. On top of that, the House had added $3 million for first-time applicants in this Conservation Partner Legacy Grant Program. That was not included in the final agreement. So in total, those are the only fiscal changes or differences in the Outdoor Heritage Fund portion. In total, the bill would appropriate $128,394,000 primarily in fiscal year 22, and then next year there'd be a fiscal year 23 bill. There's a little bit for admin uh, in the second year. Moving on to the Clean Water Fund, there's a few more differences here. Starting on line 72 is the Clean Water Fund. The first difference was on line 77 for technical assistance. Uh, the governor had 1.5 million per year. The house included 1.452 million per year. The Senate included the higher, higher number and then the final agreement was at the higher number for a full $3 million, but they were very close to begin with. The next change was for the Forever Green Agricultural Initiative. The governor had $4 million in his supplemental recommendations. The house included $4.5 million and the, the Senate had 4 million and the final agreement was at the $4 million number. Those are the only changes that the Department of Agriculture in total $20,240,000 is being appropriated to the Department of Ag for their various programs. Starting on line 84 is the Pollution Control Agency. Uh, on line 85 is the first change to be the monitoring and an, an assessment rider at PCA. Uh, the amount was increased, as you can see, $400,000 total above what the governor had, the House and the Senate had. And that was in order to um, include an 
additional appropriation in order to meet the river watch programs. You'll see later on the house had uh, separate riders for these separate appropriations and they were uh, in the agreement they're included as a carve out of this rider. So the rider was increased to incorporate that. On line 86, you'll see just the river watch program. The Senate had as the carve out here. On line 87 is the carve out of $150,000 per year for the Red River Watershed Management Board. And then on the next page, you'll see on line 88, there's a new Friends of the Minnesota Valley will also have a river watch program and that's a new uh, addition that hasn't been in the bill in the past. Um, the next change would be on line 89, the watershed restoration and protection strategies. The governor had 13.2 million, so did the House and Senate, but these were also increased a bit. And again, that was to incorporate another car vote uh, for public awareness and outreach on line 90 for $280,000 per year. And that kind of relates, uh, scroll down here, a little bit lower down for the We Are Water Minnesota uh, appropriation that was not included in the agreement. So that was language similar to that. Uh, the next change would be on line um, 898 for the Clean Water Council budget. The governor had $550,000, the house included $700,000 and added some uh, additional reporting requirements. It, and that's why it was increased. The Senate had a much smaller amount. And in the end, the agreement was at $550,000. And as I mentioned, the line 99, the We Are Water Minnesota, that was no longer included as a separate rider. Uh, and line 100, 101, and 102 are the River Watch programs. The House had those as separate appropriations, but they're now included as car votes. So that first appropriation to PCA. And then on line 103, the house had added an, appropriate, added an appropriation of 2.1 million for micro and nanoplastics testings and protocols, and that was not included in the final agreement. So the total appropriation to the Pollution Control Agency is $42,177,000 for the biennium. Under the Department of Natural Resources, uh, there's the fish contamination and assessment rider. This was increased in the governor's supplemental recommendation. The house carried that number at 910,000. The Senate had 270,000 and the final agreement was at $350,000. Uh, the next change was on the non-point source restoration and protection strategies. The governor and the house had $2.6 million for this purpose. The Senate had $2 million and the final agreement was at $2.5 million. And then on line 114, you'll see groundwater management area creation in Dakota County. This was an addition in the house that was not included in the agreement. And then on line 115, there is a rider in the governor's supplemental recommendation for modernizing Minnesota's culvert system. And that was not included in the House or Senate bill or the final agreement. In total, the Department of Natural Resources uh, appropriation is $17.465 million for the biennium. Next, starting on line 117 is the Board of Water and Soil Resources. Uh, the first change would be on line 118, the governor's recommendation and the house had $43.564 million for the grants for water to watersheds with approved com comprehensive watershed plans. The Senate had a higher number, about $3.4 million higher, but the final agreement was at the house and governor number for this one. The next, change was on one line 121 for measures results and accountability the house had 2.7 million dollars the senate had two million dollars the final agreement was at 2.5 million dollars the line 127 was there's a governor clean water council recommendation for conservation drainage management and assistance this was not included in the house bill the senate had it at just under two million dollars the final agreement was at 1.7 million dollars the next change was on line 128, the Conservation Reserve Enhancement Program. The Governor Clean Water Council recommendations were at $1.2 million. The House had $2 million for this purpose. The Senate had $15.5 million for this purpose. And the final agreement was at $5.6 million. Uh, the next change was on the last line on that page, 131 for the Watershed Partners Legacy Grant Program. Uh, this would be a new program that hasn't that has received appropriations in the past. Uh, the Governor Clean Water Council had a million dollar recommendation for this. The House had the same or $2,000 more than that. The Senate did not carry this, but it was included in the final agreement at a million dollars. Going on to the next page. 
the wetland restoration easements, uh, the governor had a recommendation of $10 million. The House had $4.8 million, and the Senate did not include this uh, appropriation at all. And the final agreement was at $5.66 million. On line 133 was enhancing landowner adoption of cover crops. The governor had $4.066 million, as did the House. The Senate did not include this rider, but it was included in the agreement at $4 million. The next four riders are related to the SWCD administration grants. Uh, the governor's supplemental recommendation included $18 million for this purpose. The House went about it a little different, included $12 million the first year, and then had grant programs the second year of $2.4 million for uh, the soil health practices for groundwater protection, wind erosion to protect surface waters, and then soil health practices to protect surface and groundwater. Uh, the Senate just had $12 million per year for SWCD grants. And the final agreement included $12 million per year for the SWCD grants. And then those supplemental grant programs for soil health were not included in the agreement. On line 138 was a uh, addition that the House made of 263,000 for the SWCD and watershed merger study. This was not included in the final agreement. In total, there's $141,800,000 being appropriated to the Board of Water and Soil Resources. Uh, moving on to one, line 140 is the Minnesota Department of Health. Uh, the first rider is source water protection. You'll see that we, the House Senate and the governor all had the same amount at 6.158. The final amount is higher. And you'll see on line 144, the uh, private well water source protection rider. Again, the House and Senate both had the same number, but that amount was uh, moved into the source water protection rider. So in total, that would be $7.8 million for that source water protection rider. Uh, and then the last change there would be the House had added an appropriation for health risk limit for the three named chemicals here. Uh, those were not included in the final agreement. So that is a lower amount than the House had. Um, in total, the Department of Health will receive $11.91 million. Moving on to the Metropolitan Council, there are a couple differences. Uh, on line 150, Water Demand Reduction Grant Program. The House had 1.25 million, the Senate had 750,000. In total, we ended up at the 1.25 million for the agreement. And then on line 151, the House had added an appropriation for inflow and infiltration grants of $2.5 million. This was not included in the final agreement. And on line 152, the Lead Service Line Replacement Grants. Again, the House had added $2.5 million appropriation for this purpose, and that was not included in the final agreement. In total, the Metropolitan Council will be receiving $3.088 million for the biennium. <laughs> Starting on line 154 is the University of Minnesota. There was a little difference on line 156 for stormwater BMP performance evaluation and technology transfer. The House had $1.35 million, the Senate had $1.5 million, and it was included at $1.5 million. On line 158, there's a chronic wasting disease in water. It's uh, research at the U of M for 1.378 that was added in the House bill that was included in the final agreement. In total, the University of Minnesota received $3.968 million for the biennium. On line 160 is just the Legislative Coordinating Commission appropriation for the website. And then on line 163 is Public Facilities Authority. The Senate had a slightly higher amount for the uh, point source implementation grants, about a million dollars higher. But it was, the final agreement includes the House number of 15.936 for that purpose. In total, PFA would receive 16.136 million for the biennium. In total, the bill appropriates $256,792,000 for the biennium, and that would leave the fund at a 5% reserve based on the February forecast. Moving on to the Parks and Trails Fund, there are only minor differences here to begin with. Um, it basically follows the 40-40-20 split. The bigger change I would say would be on the 179, the coordination among partners. As you can see, the House had just over $1.1 million. The Senate had a million twenty-four dollars, twenty-four thousand for this purpose. And the final agreement included the lower amount, which may, meant that there is roughly $100,000 that could be uh, or I guess $83,000 that could be appropriated to the other portions. So you see that the amount for the state parks is 33,000 higher than the house. The 
local parks is 17 or regional parks is 17,000 higher than the house had. And then the same with the Met council parks is 33,000 higher than the house had. In total, the Parks and Trails Fund would appropriate $110,681,000 for the biennium. And that would leave the fund at a 5% reserve based on the February forecast. And I will continue to share my screen, but I will switch over to let Ms. Uh, Roberts go through the arts fund. Um, Thank you, Mr. Hagemeyer. Uh, um, I also want to mention that uh, we have uh, one of the conferees, uh, uh, Representative Hewitt, is on the on the Zoom as well today, and uh, I want to thank all my conferees as well that uh, participate and uh, participated and helped uh, through the process. Um, Miss Roberts, sorry I interrupted. Um, no, that's okay, Mr. Chair. I just want to check that you can hear me okay. I had problems with my mic earlier. It's a little soft to me, but that happened last time, and someone was saying that you sounded fine. So. Maybe that was just me. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> okay, I will try to speak up. Um, <laughs> so starting with the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund, the first agency is the Arts Board and the total appropriation is 70.382 million. Um, you can see that the House, um, the Senate and the governor were all at the same level. Um, the only difference here was a little bit of the allocation um, between the House and the Senate. And uh, the agreement was to take the House allocation. And this is at the 47% of the total um, available resources as required by statute. Um, the next agency is the Minnesota Historical Society and the total um, appropriation would be 33.085 million. And again, the changes from the house position are pretty minor. You'll see on line 201 and 202, some small differences in the statewide historic and cultural grants, and then the statewide history programs. So the total difference from the house position and that is just um, $22,000. Moving down to the Department of Education, um, the, the two things I'd call to your attention on line 213, the water safety grant program is funded at $220,000. This is a a difference of $80,000 less than the House position. Um, the Senate did not, had not included any funding for this. And then for the Minnesota Center for the Book, the funding is at $200,000 compared to the House position of 250. And again, the Senate had not included any funding for this in their bill. Um, so the total for the Department of Education is $5.4 million. Moving down to Department of Administration, um, the first uh, two items I point out to you are for Minnesota Public Radio and then Ampers Public Radio. The agreement is to fund this at $3.9 million each. That um, reflects the Senate's level of funding. So it's an increase over the House of $400,000 for each one of those items. Uh, moving down to line 220 under Minnesota Public Television, uh, <clears throat> the agreement is at $8.9 million. So that's an increase of 420,000 over the um, House position. Um, the Senate had funded it at this level. The next change on line 223 is the Science Museum of Minnesota. Um, the agreement is to fund it at the Senate level of 1.4 million. So that's an increase of $100,000 over the house. And then moving down to line 225, the Lake Superior Zoo, the funding is at $150,000. Um, the house had originally had it at 300,000. So this is a reduction of 150,000 from the house position. Um, the Senate had it at 150,000. Um, moving on to down, um, the next items are um, at the end of uh, Department of Administration, you'll see four items that were Senate only positions that were funding. The first is $150,000 for the Veteran Memorial Matching Grants. This is a competitive grant program um, for local governments and requires a local match. The second is $128,000 in the first year for the Disabled Veterans Rest Camp at, um, on Big Marine Lake, and this is for landscape improvements. $30,000 is included for a grant to the TAP in St. Paul to support mental health 
um, in disability community communities through spoken art forms, community supports and engagement. And finally, on line 230, um, $30,000 to the city. Um, and I don't, I'm not sure I'm going to pronounce that one right. So <laughs> Quezon or Quezon um, for a WPA restoration um, project at the Veterans Memorial Park. So the total funding for the Department of Administration is $22.6 million for the biennium. Uh, moving down to the Minnesota Zoo, on line uh, 233, the funding is at $3.9 million. So this is uh, $400,000 over what the um, House position had been and $100,000 less than what the Senate position was. Um, moving on to the Minnesota Humanities Commission, the, um, I'll point out um, the, the difference on line 240 is the big difference in this um, agency for the Community Identity and Heritage Grants. Um, the agreement is to fund these at $5 million, so that's $2.25 million less than the House position. The House had funded it at $7.25 million and a $1 million over the Senate position. Um, and you'll see more in the language portion, but just to point out, um, the House had um, specific carve outs out of this community and identity and heritage grants funding and the agreement um, creates a competitive grant program for grants to individuals or organizations for works creating and celebrating and teaching the art and cultural heritage of diverse Minnesota communities. Um, and then the, the other change within um, the Humanities Commission is on line 260 for the Civics Education Grant. That's funded at 200,000, so that's 50,000 over the House position. And the total for the um, Humanities Commission is 9.55 million for the biennium. For the Indian Affairs Council, um, there, the council is funded at $4 million, and this is, um, the House position, so, um, and then slightly lower than the Senate position, 120,000 lower. For the Department of Agriculture, um, the funding is at 800,000, so that provides 400,000 per year for the county fair grants. Um, and that, again, is an increase of 400,000 over the House position. And finally, you'll see the $4,000 for the Legislative Coordinating Commission for um, this funds portion of their website. So the total appropriation out of the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund is 149.749 million. And as with other funds, this includes a 5% reserve. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Roberts. Is, is that it? That's it for the arts. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, so I, Ms. Taylor, are you uh, are you on deck? I am, Mr. Chair. And just as okay. a warning, my power went out just a couple minutes ago, so I'm using my phone, so my internet might not be as great as it used to be. So if you have trouble, <laughs> I might turn off my video if okay, things whatever get a little hairy. But I'll whatever go Whatever you forward. need to do. Yep, we can hear you good and strong right now. So. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Well, I'm just going to go over the posted legacy um, language that was CKM legacy, dated uh, June 7, 2021. Uh, in Article uh, 1, the Outdoor Heritage Fund, there's really only three language differences from what passed the House. Uh, one is the carve out for the first time applicants, as we saw in the spreadsheet, was not included in the CPL program. Uh, there was a writer request requiring uh, recipients to contact the DNR to determine if there were opportunities to work with the No Child Left Inside, Inside program or if there were other opportunities. Um, that was not included. Uh, there was also that statutory requirement um, requiring cultural diversity assessment and that was not included. So those are the three main differences in the Out Outdoor Heritage Fund article. Uh, I can go next to the Clean Water Fund article. Uh, that starts on page 41 of the document. Uh, I'll point out here there was a rider um, to increase the diversity in, of um, people in environmental careers. Uh, that was not included. 
there was also, uh, if you remember, some language adding microplastics and nanoplastics and various um, writers that dealt with uh, assessment and monitoring work. Uh, those were not included. Uh, if you go to page 44, uh, to the Forever Green Rider, there were a few changes here. There was a technical change to add reference to the University of Minnesota, as well as some language on uh, lines 13 and 14, stating that um, the program is um, also designed to increase the efficiency, profitability, and productivity of Minnesota farmers. That had been re removed in the house, but it is included here. And then on the bottom of that page uh, 44 is um, the rider where the river watch carve out that was discussed in the spreadsheet that's been added here. And then on page 45, there's a carve out for community engagement on the rider. Um, and the language is 45.22 through 45.25 is where that is. Uh, then we can skip ahead to page 54. Towards the bottom of that page on line 30 and 31, there's some language um, extending the availability of the CREP appropriation that was carried in the Senate that has been picked up here. And then if you go to page 56, uh, this is the SWCD grants writer. Uh, you'll see what, uh, this is the Senate language that provided the base um, grants, as well as the formula that's been used in past years. There's also a change on uh, line 21, increasing the amount the, that Bowser can use for administration from 1% to 2%. And then if you go to page 58, uh, there is one change here on line 58.21. You'll see the word voluntary was added in front of the statewide plan for protecting drinking water. And then on page 61, towards the bottom of that page and the um, PFA appropriations, uh, two additional years were added um, for the availability of those two appropriations. And you'll see that on lines 25 and lines 30, it had been on um, 2026 in the house version. Then we can skip ahead to page 89. On the bottom of that page, there's a new section. Uh, this is what's carried in the Senate. It extends the availability of an appropriation for multi-purpose water management. That was for the great Greater Blue Earth River Basin Alliance. And then moving to the next page, there's um, section 24. This is um, the Clean Water Council reporting requirements. The House had originally had three different pieces uh, in the agreement. Only one of those is um, included. That's for the LIDAR assessment. The other is um, for the Supreme Court case assessment and then the assessment of state um, employees that were funded by the Clean Water Fund were not included. There were also a couple other sections that were not included. There was the um, diversity assessment requirement similar to the Outdoor Heritage Fund for the Clean Water Fund, and that was not included. There was the requirements for the Department of Health to um, establish health risk limits for, for PFOS and the two neonics, that was also not included. And then the Clean Water Council um, requirement to develop an RFP for the tire additive study was not included. And that concludes the differences for the Clean Water Fund. And then for the Parks and Trails Fund, there were just a few things um, that were dropped. And I'll just go over those. There was a rider um, that would prioritize energy and water conservation in the projects. And that was not included. There had also been a rider stating that the DNR would work to provide opportunities for, a, for diverse students to pursue environmental careers. That was not included. Uh, the changes to the loose line trail were not included. And then there was a diversity assessment requirement for the Parks and Trails Fund that was similar to the other funds and that also was not included. And that concludes the differences in the first three articles that Ms. Mullen wants to um, go through the changes in article four. Thank you, uh, Ms. Taylor, and um, good morning, Ms. Mullen. Uh, go ahead when you're ready, please. 
Thank you, Chair and members. Um, Ms. Roberts hit a lot of the changes to the riders that were incorporated. So I'm just gonna talk about the last two provisions in Article 4. Article 4, Section 3 adds a house provision that amends existing statute to add historical preservation course to the list of government entities and nonprofits covered under the joint exercise of power statute and provides municipal liability limits and insurance provisions consistent with that section. And then Article 4, Section 4 is another house provision that provides uh, that the Phelan Park China Garden appropriation from 2019 is available until June 30th, 2023. And if you have any other questions, please let me know. Um, and Mr. Stanley can jump in if he thinks we missed anything that's around. Okay, so so that's that's it. Uh, well, thank you, uh, thank you, um, uh, nonpartisan staff. Uh, we've been really blessed by your work, and uh, thank you for going through the uh, the finance side of the bill and the policy. As you can hear, we've had some. Uh, um, some victories and some losses uh, from our house position, but uh, um, we had, uh, <laughs> I think, 17 offers back and forth, and uh, um, you know, so that that was quite something. And staff helped us uh, through the process as we were writing these up and back and forth and back and forth. So, uh, um, but uh, I was wondering if there's uh, any member questions at this point. Representative Anderson. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Just a quick question going back to an earlier uh, researcher talking about the Bowser approved plans, uh, Bowser grants to uh, watersheds that have approved plans. Um, I'd like to get a little more information on that. Our watersheds are coming up with uh, ditch repair type projects that are hugely expensive. And the uh, people along these ditches are being assessed huge amounts of money. So just wondering, what, what that entails, these Bowser grants to watersheds, uh, what is that for? I believe we have someone here from Bowser that could kind of talk through, uh, um, Ms. Kadoka, if, uh, are, you, are you available? Hello, Mr. Want, Chair and members. If you want, if you want that, if not, uh, we can, it seems to make sense that you could answer or work on that one. Sure, absolutely. Um, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Representative Anderson, for the question. So the grants to watersheds with approved plans are um, are for watersheds that have completed the one watershed, one plan planning grants, or for any metro areas because they already have the surface water management plans. And so that particular appropriation are for those two uh, grantees. Representative Anderson, does that kind of give you an overview? I, yeah, yes, it does. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chair. Okay. And thank you. Uh, thanks, Ms. Kadelka, for hopping on there. Um, Representative Green, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, that, that was kind of the, the same area. Well, there's a lot of stuff in here that, that I did have kind of problems with, but, uh, um, and and I have to say that, you know, I thought I thought we should have more meetings. I uh, uh, I was you know informed after the fact on things that went on, and and really um, there was really no reason for us to even have a committee the way things worked out because we were just uh, sometimes told, sometimes not, as to what you know what came out and what we were going to uh, be voting on in the end. So that was kind of discouraging. There are some things in the bill I don't like. Uh, and and the Bowser money is one of it. I think the Bowser money was increased in here. We're still going through that, um, and we've got a lot of problems with our watershed districts up here. In fact, I just got an email today for uh, uh, a group of landowners now that the watershed is going to uh, implement imp imminent domain on some of the projects that uh, are Bowser approved, and uh, and those things are are not uh, not good for us out here. And then we also still have in this in this bill the money to uh, for the arts board and for the historical society to develop curriculum for uh, elementary age kids 
and and what they would consider to be age appropriate. That in itself is a is a deal breaker for me. I don't uh, I don't think that's necessary. In fact, I think it can be damaging. But um, but I, I know I know your situation, Mr. Chair, and and uh, I'm not putting the blame on anybody. I just I just don't think that um, I don't think the process worked out the way that it really is is intended to in the legislature. But uh, and I and I did when I was down there did, earlier this week. I did print out the new version of the bill because I can't do that at home, and so I'll be comparing it with my old notes and stuff as well. And and I suppose we'll have that conversation on the floor. But then the question is, uh, have you heard, Mr. Chair, when this bill may come to the floor during special session? Is it coming up right away or is it going to be, you know, come up after negotiations are made on the other bills or what? Um, thank you, Representative Green, for your comments and participation. I I, I hear what you're saying. It's, uh, you know, with uh, COVID especially, I mean, and, you know, you've been here a while and um, conference conference committees just aren't what they used to be. It's it's actually quite sad. I uh, I like the public uh, format of uh, um, the old school of watching them, and you know, and you know, as members, you learn a lot from watching other conference committees. But I feel like we both sides, you know, we would have gained by having more public. I actually didn't know there was a letter that came out that. Senator Rood told me at the end from, from the House GOP, I didn't even know about that. Um, and that's kind of why that study went away at the end because uh, she was saying that, that you guys didn't want that. I, I, I had been fighting for that because I thought that was a, a Torgelson amendment. And so I, I was told differently at the end. So there was all sorts of things. Uh, on, on the bill itself, uh, um, it's, uh, you know, the, um, I think a lot of the bills are coming together yet and we're not really sure. My understanding is we're going to go to ways and means on Monday um, when we're coming back and then the, the progress or the steps forward. I, I quite honestly don't know. Um, it's above my pay grade and uh, I certainly hope we're not tied into anything else. We could uh, certainly ride alone and, and be one of the bills that passes. And, uh, um, but uh at least that's my intent, and I, I, I think uh, I think we'd all benefit by getting this out there and starting this work. There's a lot of good work uh, that can be done. Um, we did. There was some of your members that uh, had some current concerns in the water, and we did end up moving closer to the Senate position there. So some of your members' comments on the House floor, I think this bill fits closer to what uh, what they were wanting was some of the Senate position on the soil and water conservation districts, which is. Uh, you know, multi, multi million dollar move on the house position. Um, so, you know, there's pluses and minuses, as you know, with everything, sir. Thanks, Representative Green. Chair. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? I saw Representative Zhang uh, face pop up. I didn't know if that uh, it was just nice to see him. <laughs> nice to see the people you see. I, I so miss everybody. It's just, it's, it's a horrible, uh, horrible world. I'm, I'm hoping that we can get back face to face at some point soon. It's uh, Representative Zhang, was there a hand raised or? Uh... No, Mr. Chair, but uh, since you like to call me, I will just uh, <laughs> say that I really appreciate your leadership in this. I know that uh, um, both sides are not happy, but this is the reality uh, of compromising. So I appreciate you and uh, Mr. Mozan, our nonpartisan staff, uh, and the Senate staff, and Senator Rude for your leadership and working together uh, to get this bill moving. And I look forward to uh, having further discussion with you and everyone down the road. Thank you, Representative Zhang. There's so many great things in this bill and, uh, you know, everyone on this team, uh, if you, even if you weren't on the conference committee, but everyone has uh, helped make it better through this whole session. And uh, the House position was very strong and, on, um, you know, and very diverse, but we, in, you know, on, on, you know, on so many things, but I think we did a, a solid job uh, 
Um, thank you, Representative Zhang and others. Representative Murphy, good morning. Yes. Good morning. I just want to confirm that the language for the extension for the Munger Trail spur from Hermantown was that was extended to uh, 2022. Is that correct? June 30th, 2022. Representative Murphy, we, um, I believe that I, well, I, it's my understanding that it's included. I staff can uh, hop on and uh, confirm that. I'm getting a, a big thumbs up from uh, representative, or not, not representative, I don't know, Demoto, but uh, <laughs> Mr. Molzon. But Janelle, uh, Ms. Taylor, could you confirm that just to, to be sure? Yeah, Mr. Chair, it is included. It's uh, section six on page 95 of the document. So it has been included. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank I didn't. I, I don't. I didn't. Don't have that. I have a previous document. I wanted to just just confirm. Thank you. Yep. Thank you for your work. Thank you, uh, Representative Murphy. You've. Uh, I've been lucky to have many conversations with you and have your advice, uh, Representative Erdahl. I'm uh, sorry. My apologies. Uh, um, the Senate. We had yours. And we were fighting for your trail. Uh, uh, thing, but apparently that's in the environment bill we kept hearing over and over. So uh, I hope that's the case. Uh, it wasn't from lack of effort on our our side, but it uh, it was the position of the Senate that that was in the other bill and would be taken care of. Representative Erdahl, I see your hand is up. We we can't hear you, sir. There it is. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Chair Lilly, for uh, the work that you've done. Uh, I, it is my understanding that the uh, loose line uh, green leaf uh, provision is in the environment bill, but uh, I would like to get some uh, some advice from uh, uh, Representative Mur uh, Murphy uh, later on, on how to how to work with uh, Senator Rood to get uh, trail changes made, so we can have a discussion uh, offline. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Representative Erdahl. And uh, I don't know if you noticed the bill uh, included some money for uh, some work being done in Litchfield and for the Opera House. And uh, um, I know you want to take credit, but I, th I think uh, all the conferees are going to confirm that it was for your for your wife, not not you so much. Well, thank you, uh, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. And, and my wife is standing right next to me here. Uh, I don't think she uh, wants to speak publicly, but she's very happy. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, any other member questions? Uh, get that got that recorded for the next. So, uh, anyways, um, um, committee, I, um, I'm just going to spend a few seconds to uh, again thank our staff, uh, um, uh, Miss Zipko with the GO team GOP and uh, uh, Miss Peterson. Uh, um, with ours and uh, and certainly uh, Miss Hirsch and uh, um, Mr. Molzon, I I added them to the Murphy clan the other day on a caucus call, so I got to be careful there. But uh, really, a great team. I've been really lucky with uh, both sides of the aisle, and of course, my uh, uh, conferees. Uh, again, uh, Representative Green, I'm sorry, and to all of you, it just uh, it's such a horrible process. Uh, um, um, Representative Zhang, uh, uh, Vice Chair uh, Jordan, uh, uh, Representative Hewitt, um, I just really want to thank you and uh, all for uh, offering advice uh, um, and encouragement, both uh, kicks in the shin and uh, pats on the back. I take them both, and uh, um, but thank you. Uh, and we got a little bit more money for the zoo, so uh, John. Representative Hewitt is, uh, he feels like it was time well spent, but you know, there's so many great things in this bill that uh, all of us members can be really proud of. Uh, you know, um, I'm just gonna pick out a couple things that I just, you know, uh, some of the smaller items, I just really think it make a difference. I don't know if you guys watch the news, I sure do, and I'm sure everybody does, but you know, we've lost a lot of young people to not knowing how to swim. And how horrible is that for one example in Minnesota? Um, 
Representative Wazalik last year uh, brought that on board and we added more money this year for swimming lessons. And I mean, imagine a legacy bill being able to save save some lives and uh, and certainly we want people to be able to get on the water in Minnesota. I'm super excited about the River Watch and Appetite for Change. And my goodness, uh, what a neat program that uh, um, it's gonna bring, you know, what a blessing to Minnesota. I mean, it's, and please look at it if you haven't more deeply and thank you, uh, Vice Chair Jordan and others for that. And uh, um, But I wanna thank the committee uh, and again, my apologies, it's a horrible time to be a member and it's, you know, the staff, I mean, uh, we've been so lucky with our staff, uh, Mr. Hagemeyer, Ms. Roberts, um, uh, Ms. Uh, Taylor and Ms. Smolin and, you know, they just uh, fight for us and, uh, you know, but it's just, I mean, it's a real community on this committee and I'm carrying on from previous chairs, Representative Erdahl and Ms. Uh, or, uh, Representative Murphy and their leadership. and. Uh, like I said all along, when he is going to take over for me when I'm done, and uh, and I, I I know we're going to be in able hands, and I'm super excited about the future of Minnesota. But there are some good things in here, and um, yeah, there it's not perfect, um, but um, this legacy bill it just does some amazing work. I mean, just uh, from arts to libraries to the outdoors, and uh, just uh, the water, just improving our water. But again, the parks and trails. Thank you, everyone. Um, with that, uh, we'll see you on uh, either in ways or means in the house and house floor. And uh, I really want to thank everyone on uh, the committee and uh, also the people that receive our money. Please be good stewards of this and hear what we're talking about and step up and, you know, make sure this money is going to everyone in Minnesota as you come forward next biennium or even next year um, and just doing good work for Minnesota to make us all proud. So thank you. With that, uh, uh, we're adjourned.